Hey guys, I am back for a third video on this GPD win. I didn't think I was going to be doing so many of them, but I'm finding more and more uses for it. And this one I just have to talk about. This guy right here. It's the Jot Dash. Okay, this brings fine-tipped uh, stylus functionality to the GPD win. This stylus um, was originally made for like iPad, and this was prior to the Apple Pencil. Um, or at least prior to me having an Apple Pencil. The idea is it's Bluetooth, it syncs to an iPad, and it has uh, pressure sensitivity and supported apps. And it specifically says it's not, it doesn't support Windows or any of the desktop operating systems, but then I realized, you know, the, the technology behind how this tip works, it should work on any capacitive screen. Um, I'm pretty sure all their support is just talking about the Bluetooth uh, pressure sensitivity. And sure enough, if I bring it in here, turn it on, watch this, look at that, it works just fine. So you have a fine tip stylus that works with any capacitive screen. We just don't have pressure sensitivity or any of that, which is frankly just fine because um, what would you, you're not going to do a masterful work of art on this kind of system. So before to be productive with it I had to have it connected to my iPad using duet display and an external keyboard and mouse but um, I found this brings a whole new level of productivity to the device so let me show a couple apps um, Microsoft Paint I just opened it up real quick so I don't have anything else on just so you can see you know if I do the nice diagonal line test that so many people like you can kind of get in there and see how well the lines work on it it's pretty good. Um, of course, who's going to use paint for anything? But uh, that should that proves that it should work with um, any um, application that supports Microsoft's uh, Touch API. Some applications, however, don't. This is really this is just registering as the same thing as a fingertip would. Um, and there are applications such as Photoshop, which don't recognize uh, the Windows touch input. However, this is the neat part. There's this um, software I learned about back when I tried to make a Dell Venue 8 Pro a productivity device called, uh, I think it's called like just Touch Mouse or something like that. It's by a developer. I think their name is like Love Summer True. It's some Chinese developer. It sounds like malware, but it's not. And when I click this little guy right here, the screen just made a full screen trackpad. So if I pinch zoom, I can make it smaller so you can see it. It's an on-screen um, trackpad, and you can move it around. I don't know why I'm not, but anyway, well, yeah. So you can see it's basically just like a virtual mouse trackpad with right and mouse, left mouse click. If you pinch and zoom out, the whole screen becomes a trackpad. So now you can see I'm actually moving the cursor around with the brush selected. And so if I hold the left mouse button, that's the left mouse click, and now... I'm working in Photoshop. Now, at first, I thought to myself, let's, you know, it's kind of frustrating not having it be the pen tip that's on screen. But when I actually sat down to use it, I took to it pretty quickly because I realized that if you're working with something like an Intuos graphics tablet, where you're not drawing directly on the screen, you get very used to being able to hover the stylus above the screen to move the mouse cursor and then touching the screen to commit the click that begins the drawing. Well, even with the Apple Pencil, you don't have the ability to, you know, hover above the screen to move the cursor. You just have to put your pen down and start drawing. So the fact that I'm moving it on screen like this kind of emulates that feel of a graphics tablet where you can hover the pencil around. So if I stop thinking of this as like a Cintiq style device where I can just directly draw on the screen and think of it more like an Intuos graphics tablet where I hold the left mouse button to draw. Um, it works very well, believe it or not. And that means even things like Blender get to work because Blender also doesn't work with the Touch API, but we can grab this object. Let's go down here to mode, click, go to edit mode. Let's come up here and click on a uh, device, I right click to select, and then now I can just move that mouse over to the arrow, left click to hold it, drag it along the line. So, 
anything I can do with the mouse and blender I can do here. And I haven't done this part yet, but with the D-pad, since this is basically mapped to W, A, S, and D, I'm fairly positive I could go into Blender and map the D-pad to be all the shortcut keys I would need. So between left mouse click and mapping the D-pad buttons, you can actually effectively model in this thing. Originally when I got this, I didn't think this was going to increase my rate of productivity, more like give me a for, more fun way to be productive. Um, as I get older and have the ability to make games, I find it's more, f it's as fun or more fun for me to make games instead of just playing them. So I always thought, what if I had a DS or portable gaming like device that allowed me to actually make games? Um, with that in mind, here's a great fit for making games on the GPD Win. The Construct 2 game engine, it basically builds uh, HTML5 games that can be wrapped and sent to um, any platform you want, iOS or whatever. I'll let you Google Construct 2 um, uh, by Skira if you want to, but the nice thing about it is the way you code in it is with um, an event sheet. Ah, if I can just click on, oh, I still have the trackpad on. Let me turn that off. All right. So with the event sheet, um, you actually just click add new event and like basically it's diagram programming is what it is, which I am a syntax programmer. I do all my game development in Unity and I love C Sharp and Visual Studio and all of that. But if I'm just rapidly prototyping or I want to kick back on the couch and I feel like I want to play a game, but now nah, I'd rather make one, I jump over here and just casually prototype something. This isn't my prototype we're looking at, by the way. I just loaded up one of their demos. Just come down here, click Add Event, pick your events. And there's very minimal actual syntax programming to complete, uh, complete a working game. And of course, you can use the, um, uh, was it right click and scroll wheel, left click and scroll, anyway. Well, point is, I forget, something in scroll wheel, I forget what at the moment, but you can change the text size so it can be bigger or smaller, so you can actually read it. And of course, the games do run pretty well on here. So let's load their little ghost shooter demo, which their demo for this maps to the keyboard and mouse controls. Uh, da, 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 da. Give it a second there. All right. So let's see. Yeah, there we go. So the D-pad maps to W, A, S, and D, and then the mouse works just fine. Let's see, find something to shoot at. There's one. Ah, oh, man, got away, got away. Oh well, you're probably getting tired of watching me do this. Ah, I got one, okay, we're done. Let's go ahead and close it. I said close it, ah, there we go. Okay, anywho, the great thing about that is um, I've also tested the gamepad out. So for if you want to use the gamepad with that game engine, you can just switch over to gamepad mode and it seamlessly goes back and forth between the two. Mouse mode for working, game mode, uh, play mode for testing. Um, that was really nice. So yeah, I, uh, uh, I'm actually now able to use Blender, you know, touch up work in Photoshop or layout stuff in Photoshop. Uh, OneNote, and I can I can actually navigate the desktop reasonably well finally because of this. Yeah. Um, oh right, yeah, that one you need the touchpad enabled for. Let me bring that over there, minimize that. So yeah, traditional Windows desktops use the touch mouse program by uh, Love Summer True. If you just Google that, you'll find it. It's free, I should mention, um, and that'll allow you to use the non-touch enabled applications and then of course with any other touch application it just works like a mouse or like a finger touch so anyway yeah this has added a whole new kind of depth of productivity that I can have with this device so um, in an earlier video I talked about with duet display it's possible to get um, to get USB 3.0 speeds if you use the USB 3 camera adapter I did finally get one of those USB 3 camera adapters and um, so in another video later I'll show you how uh, USB 3 works or if the camera adapter is any better. And again, if you like the GPD Win, whether you like it for playing games 
or for being productive, the fact is I've noticed that if you like this device, you tend to be somebody who likes games, specifically like indie games and stuff. Um, so on that note, I do make indie games during the summer when I'm not uh, working as a teacher. And this summer I'll be back working on my game. So if you'd like, you can check out a couple of these other videos I've done on the GPD Win and productivity. Um, you can also check out my uh, video clip for the game I'm working on. And uh, please, if you like this stuff, if you want to see more of the GPD Win, and especially if you're interested in the game I'm working on, um, subscribe so that you can uh, keep up. And this summer I'll have a lot more updates. And when I'm working on my game, you can be sure to see the GPD Win pop up in it. Um, and I, and I got a number of other things planned for this summer. Also, I'll have better produced videos. When I start developing again this summer, I will have better produced videos. Um, I have a whole plan and a setup for this. This, this is kind of just on-the-fly random thoughts. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this gives you some ideas for how to be more productive with this device. Adds a new level of use to it. And uh, I hope to see you guys in the comments. Ask me whatever you like. I'll try to answer your questions. All right. Thanks, guys. See ya.